Hi everyone, it's Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. My name is Artem, and here is the news. For 376 days, Ukraine stands strong against the Russian invasion. The Russian social media channels posted a horrific video of the execution of a captured unarmed Ukrainian soldier. On the video, the Russian military kill Ukrainian who refuses to remove the chevron with the national flag and dies with the words Slava Ukraini, glory to Ukraine. The Ukrainians were shocked and enraged by the brutality of this crime. At the same time, users showed their admiration by the dignity and strength of this person. Many shared response to his call Heroiam Slava, glory to heroes, on their social media. In his in video address, President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky promised that the killers will be found. He stressed that Ukraine will not forget the feet of each and every one whose lives gave it freedom. The occupier kills for the very fact that we are Ukrainians, for the mere word about Ukraine, for our dream of Ukraine, for our lives, the lives of Ukrainians, said Zelensky. Earlier, the security service of Ukraine has opened criminal proceedings regarding the video, reports Ukrainska Pravda. Ukrainian Human Rights Commissioner Dmitro Lubinets called the shooting of the Ukrainian soldier another Russian war crime. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitro Kuleba called on the Office of the Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court to investigate the circumstances of the execution. The President of Ukraine held a meeting of the staff. According to him, participants reviewed the situation on the front line, especially at key points of hostilities. The topic of Bakhmut, Donetsk Oblast, was the main topic for this meeting. Volodymyr Zelensky said that it is important to avoid misinformation about this area of the front line. The president informed that at the meeting he directly asked both commander of this direction General Sirsky and commander-in-chief Zaluzhny about their view of the further defense operation in the Bakhmut area, either withdrawal or continuation of defense and reinforcement of the city. Both generals replied, do not withdraw and reinforce, and this opinion was unanimously backed by the staff, stressed Zelensky. He added that there is no part of Ukraine about which one can say that it can be abandoned. Bakhmut has yielded and is yielding one of the greatest results during this war, during the entire battle for Donbass, said the president. U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price said that the city like Bakhmut, where the fiercest battles are currently taking place, is not of great strategic importance for the Russians, reports Ukrinform. According to Price, the Russian forces seek to seize it because they have no other options to achieve at least some gains on the battlefield. He stressed that the dynamics of the fighting in the east and south of Ukraine will be tense and changeable for some time, but no matter how long it lasts, Russia will still suffer a strategic defeat in the war it unleashed. CNN informs that the Russian invaders lost five times more soldiers than the Ukrainian defenders in the battles for Bakhmut in the Donetsk region, reports Ukrainska Pravda. According to a NATO military official briefed on NATO intelligence, for every Ukrainian soldier who died defending Bakhmut, Russian forces lost at least five. The official emphasized that the ratio of five to one is a reasonable estimate based on intelligence. He added that Ukraine will also suffer significant losses while defending the city. Two Ukrainian pilots traveled to the United States where their skills will be analyzed as well as the needs for a potential training to fly modern aircraft, reports Ukrinform. According to the spokesman of the Air Force Command of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Yuri Ignat, the aim is to understand how much time will be needed, what training and material resources should be spent, which base to choose for the potential future training of pilots on the modern type of aircraft. He recalled that the F-16 is currently considered the most likely to become the main combat aircraft of the Air Force in the future. Ignat added that it is also necessary to organize the training of military engineers and infrastructure of Ukraine to receive Western equipment. CNN informs that while there is currently no indication of flight training for Ukrainian pilots, their presence at the base in Arizona may mean that the U.S. has not completely closed the door on providing Ukraine with F-16s, reports Ukrainska Pravda. The source also told CNN that soon another 10 Ukrainian pilots may come to the U.S. for a similar assessment and certification. 
The Highlights from Ukraine podcast is an uncommercial initiative of just two people, and we need your help to grow. Share information about the podcast, rate us in the app, subscribe to our Patreon. With your support, we are getting better. Bulgaria unofficially sold arms worth billions of dollars to Ukraine through other countries in the past two years without Ukraine and Bulgaria even having to agree a single direct deal, reports European Pravda. According to the investigation by Euroactive, even before the start of the full-scale invasion, Bulgaria was among major exporters of weapons and ammunition produced according to Soviet standards for the Ukrainian army. In 2022 alone, Bulgaria indirectly exported at least 1 billion US dollars in arms to Ukraine. Bulgarian arms companies do not sell weapons and ammunition directly to Ukrainian companies, but to Poland and Romania, who buy it using money from programs funded by the UK, the US, the EU and Poland. This way was chosen to avoid the need to negotiate deliveries with pro-Russian opposition in the Bulgarian parliament. Defense Minister of Ukraine Oleksiy Reznikov said in an interview with Liga.net that the mobilization plan, which has been in effect since the declaration of martial law in Ukraine on February 24, 2022, still needs to be completed. He informed that the general staff has a need in men. It knows the required number of drivers, gunners, operators, artillerymen and snipers. The general staff determines the tasks of the military enlistment offices, including the plan and categories of specialists. The minister pointed out that sadly the ministry didn't have time to finish the digital system for conscription due to the invasion. Reznikov also said that by cancelling 30,000 grivnias allowances for military personnel who are not involved in combat missions, the Ministry of Defense saved about 100 billion grivna, 2.72 billion US dollars. According to him, those money are necessary for the provision of the armed forces. In 2022, all military received 30,000 grivnias, which is 816 US dollars, in addition to their regular allowances, and those who were involved in combat up to 100,000 grivnias, which is 2,720 US dollars. The latter remains in place. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine. 